Hi, this is Phil from Walk Through the Bible. I have come to believe that one of the most loving things one person can do for another person is to help them view God more accurately. I think that was a big part of Jesus' ministry. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He came to reveal the Father. But he also did this through his teaching. Nowhere is this more clearly seen than Luke chapter 11. The disciples, his closest friends, had seen that Jesus consistently is a person of prayer. And they come to him one day and they say, Lord, teach us to pray. And he gives them a multifaceted response. In the first four verses of Luke chapter 11, he gives them, we call it the, the Lord's Prayer. It probably ought to be called the Disciples' Prayer. He gives them a pattern. Maybe you learned this as a child like I did, a little different wording than in my current translation, but our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins or debts or trespasses, depending on your denomination, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We used to have contests to see how fast we could say that. I don't think that's really the point other than it was effective in helping me memorize it. It's not so much that these are magic words to be said over and over and over again. It's the concept that we not just come to God with our grocery list, but that we begin with worship, that there's gratitude, that we're praying for protection as well as just his provision. There's so much in these four verses. We could talk about this for hours, but he doesn't stop there. In verses five through eight, he gives them a parable, and it's a parable about a neighbor who comes in the middle of the night. He's pounding on the door of his neighbor. He needs some help. And it says, even if you feel as if you're being rude or too persistent, our Heavenly Father invites us to pursue him like that. Verses 9 and 10, they give us really promises related to prayer. It says, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Those promises, they're, they're great word pictures for us. But then we get to verses 11 through 14 that we talk about much less. And this is really where we get to my point that the most loving thing you can do for somebody else is to help them view God more accurately. And I think that's why Jesus ends his teaching on prayer with this. He says it's important how you think about your heavenly father when you pray. You've got to have a correct concept of him. Verse 11 says, um, what father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? No father would do this that I know of. No parent would do this. If you pull through a drive through at your favorite fast food restaurant and you order a fish sandwich and as you pull it out of the bag, there's something wiggling between the buns and it turns out to be a snake, you probably have a lawsuit running through your mind. As if that's not an extreme enough example, he continues and he says in verse 12, or if he asks for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. Can you imagine a parent going, hey, can I spice that omelet up for you a little bit? You want a little kick in that? And there's a scorpion planted in there in the middle of the scrambled eggs. We build institutions for parents who even consider doing things like that. And then here's where he lands it. He says, if you then who are evil, and we are. All of us who are parents are, are far from perfect. But if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, think about the sacrifices you'll make for a child's birthday. Think about how late you'll stay up on Christmas Eve assembling a bike or that Barbie starlight bed as I did years ago. If you then know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more Will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? You know, how we view God when we come to him in prayer, it's everything. If your background church-wise is similar to mine, I grew up in a pretty legalistic background. God was to be feared, not 
revered, but afraid of him. The concept I grew up with was he's looking down from heaven and he's going to catch me messing up. And when he does, he's going to bring the hammer down. And so I want to keep secrets from a God like that. Let alone if, if your earthly father disappointed you, maybe he was absent. You don't even know who your father was. He, he was separated from you early on. Then, then you've got to change your concept when you think about coming to your, to your heavenly father, let alone if there was an abusive father in your past or, or just an aloofness. I really don't have time to you. You're not worthy of me investing too much in you. That's all got to be unlearned and relearned. And the good news is that regardless of how messed up our earthly fathers were, we all have a concept of what we wish our earthly father had been. And I can assure you, our heavenly father is all of that and so much more. You know, at Walk Through the Bible, this is why we feel it's so important to look at the big story of scripture because it's in the big story that God's heart is clearly revealed to us. And as you make the investment to get to know him in his story, it will change the way that you approach him in prayer. He's a loving father. He's eager to hear us. He's responsive to us. He never puts us on hold. He doesn't always give us exactly what we ask for because he's too wise and too loving to do that. But he's there for us. He's active. He's engaged. So think about the next time you pray. What are you picturing in heaven? How do you believe? Is he down on you? Is he on your case or does he want to be on your team? It doesn't mean that he's like a heavenly Santa Claus who never says no. He's a wise, loving God, but like so much more than any of us could be or even conceive in our earthly fathers. Think about how you view God the next time you talk to him. And I think it will release a new life, a new vibrancy, and even a new joy when you pray. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless you.